if countries like Australia insist that there is no racial equality clause, that the Australians are actually walking into a trap. Despite Peace's dire warnings, Hughes is unequivocal. White Australia must be protected. The Australian Prime Minister has played the role of Patsy to perfection. The American-British ploy works. The Japanese believe Billy Hughes is the central stumbling block. Indeed, Baron Makino, one of the senior members of the Japanese delegation, writes back to Tokyo that the racial equality clause, its fate, rests in the hands of one man, the Australian Prime Minister. After three long months of negotiations, the fate of the racial equality proposal and potentially the legality of white Australia hang in the balance. At the Palace of Versailles, a vote is taken. A majority of delegates support the proposal. But the American president intervenes. Wilson, from the chair, said there's not unanimity and this is an issue on which there must be unanimity, therefore it is lost. Quite against all procedure of, of what had been regarded as normal meeting procedure in the League itself. The Japanese were mortified. The whole notion of the League of Nations was built on the idea that it should create a fairer and more just international order. And by denying this you know, supposedly basic, basic principle of equality of states, uh, how could this League of Nations um, really effectively uh, provide a international order? On the 28th of June, 1919, the peace treaty is finally signed in the Hall of Mirrors at the Palace of Versailles. Denied its racial equality clause, Japan departs Paris humiliated and embittered against the West. Billy Hughes, on the other hand, leaves for Australia, head held high. Hughes returns to Australia a conquering hero, and always in his public speeches, he refers to the racial equality clause, and he refers to the protection of the white Australia policy. White Australia is yours. You may do with it what you please. My colleagues and I have brought that great principle back from the conference, as safe as it was on the day when it was first adopted. Hughes, already a hero to the Australian soldiers, has never been so popular. The little digger who went into battle at Versailles to save white Australia. But the triumphalism hides a grave truth. Back in Australia, people like Edmund Peace are devastated by the decision. They're devastated because Australia leaves Paris as Japan's number one enemy in the region. Well, there were people who saw the defeat at Versailles and as being one of those things which pushed the Japanese towards uh, militarism, imperialism, and militant anti-Western feeling. In the coming years, Japan's aggression will build. Ironically, by protecting its borders and the dream of a white utopia, Australia has helped sow the seeds for its darkest fears to be realized. Tilbury Docks in England, 1921. The British settler scheme proposed by Ryder Haggard has been given the go-ahead and the first organised mass migration to Australia is underway. Thousands of hopeful Britons will fill the vast empty lands, cultivate the soil and settle more than 20,000 new farms. Australia doesn't even need to pay. The British are footing the bill. It's very much an imperial vision for Australia's future. The British want to lock Australia back into the empire. And one way that this happens on the ground, literally, is through schemes of British settlement that are underpinned, underwritten for the first time by the British. 
For Frederick Chalice, the chance to leave his life behind as a poor farm labourer in Essex is too great. He sets off with his wife Rose and six children. It's a story of adventure that's been passed on to his granddaughter. Granddad realised there was no bettering himself. He wasn't going anywhere. He was going to stay like this forever unless something changed. They painted this wonderful picture. It was like, come to the land of milk and honey. You'll have a farm, fenced, cattle, a house, just everything. The sun shines all the time. It's going to be wonderful. They could actually see a future for themselves instead of standing still in, in England forever. And that to them was just a dream. As the door opens wide for the British, it is fast being slammed in the face of those trying to make their way to Australia from Asia. Meanwhile, in Western Australia, thousands of Britons are arriving. The Chalice family are on the final leg of their journey. With high hopes and dreams of finding a land of milk and honey, they meet the great Australian outdoors for the first time. They were all dumped off the truck with their belongings and left there, and the truck disappeared. There was no farm clearing or anything. It was just virgin, thick bush. Everything had to be cleared by hand, morning till night, chopping and clearing and burning and trying to get some sort of paddock to put something on. But they thought, well, we obviously have been conned, but we've got nothing else, so let's go for it. They just kept working all the time. Just every bit was a bit more improvement. I don't know how he did it. Industry, but Japan itself is fast causing alarm. Having invaded Manchuria in 1931, Japanese forces have now moved further into China. The ghosts of Versailles and the Paris Peace Conference in 1919 have come to haunt. The defeat of the racial equality proposal in 1919 was seen to be a highly significant factor in the 1930s, particularly by the militarists, uh, mainly because it was a, the most symbolic example of the West's rejection of Japan. As Japanese forces bomb Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December 1941, the die is cast for Australia. The Japanese horde pours southward. Landings are made on the Philippines. Guam, Wake, Hong Kong fall. A huge Pacific area is Japanese territory by right of conquest. War laps the shores of Australia. Australia climbed behind her defenses and waited. It's a fine day with just a few light clouds about and in the distance all these aeroplanes. Jesus, one fellow said, look at our air force. And his mate had better eyesight, he said, they are aeroplanes, we buggered, he said, they got red spots on them, they're Japs. There were flights of dive bombers, heavy bombers, fighters. You name it, they were all there. Darwin, the 19th of February, 1942. Australia's darkest fears are realised. The invasion feared for generations could finally become a reality. By World War II, 99% of Australia's 7 million people are white. Half a century of exclusion and restriction has socially engineered a nation.
Next on Immigration Nation, how Australia spins the arrival of a million migrants, yet somehow clings to the white Australia policy. The selection teams are instructed very clearly to select people from Latvia and the Baltic countries and to have blonde, buxom women. And for an interactive version of the Australian immigration story, go to sbs.com.au forward slash immigration nation.